At this point, Rhea fled the palace. She wept and wailed and didn't know what to do. She went to her brothers and sisters, her nieces and nephews, anyone who would listen. She pleaded for help. The other titans were either too scared of Kronos, like Themis, or they worked for Kronos, like Hyperion, and told her to stop whining. Finally, Rhea visited her sister Phoebe at the Oracle of Delphi, but sadly, even the Oracle had no advice for her. Rhea ran to the nearest meadow, threw herself on the ground, and began to cry. Suddenly, she heard whispering from the earth. It was the voice of Gaia, who was still asleep, but even in her dreams, the Earth Mother couldn't stand to hear the wailing of her lovely daughter. When you are ready to deliver your next child, Gaia's voice whispered, go to Crete to give birth. You will find help there. This child will be different. He will save the others. Rhea sniffled and tried to pull herself together. Where is Crete? It's an island to the south, Gaia's voice said. You take the Ionian Sea down to, like, Kalamata. Then you turn left and, you know what, you'll find it. When the time came, Rhea started to get a very big belly. She took a few deep breaths, composed herself, and waddled into the throne room. My lord Kronos, she said, I am off to Crete. I will be back with the baby. Crete, Kronos scowled. Why Crete? Um, well, Rhea said. You know how Koyos and Phoebe sometimes have glimpses of the future? Yeah. I didn't want to spoil the surprise, but they prophesied that if I had this child in Crete, it would please you best of all. And, of course, my lord, I am all about pleasing you. Kronos frowned. He was suspicious, but he also thought, Hey, I've eaten five kids and Rhea's still here. If she were going to try something fishy, she would have done it already. Plus, by now his thoughts were getting a little sluggish. He had five young gods shifting around in his gut, fighting for space. So he always felt like he'd just eaten a massive dinner and needed a nap. I mean, five gods in one stomach? Dang, that's enough for double tennis, including a ref. They'd been down there for so long, they were probably hoping Cronus would swallow a deck of cards or a Monopoly game. Anyway, Cronus looked at Rhea and said, You'll bring the baby to me immediately? Of course. Okay, off you go. Where is Crete? Not sure, Rhea said. I'll find it. And she did. Once she got there, she was immediately met by some helpful nymphs who had also heard the voice of Gaia. They brought Rhea to a cozy, well-hidden cave at the base of Mount Ida. The nymph's stream ran nearby, so Rhea would have lots of fresh water. The bountiful forest offered plenty of meat and plenty to eat. Yes, I know, immortals live mostly on nectar and ambrosia, but in a pinch they could eat other stuff. Being a god wouldn't be much fun if you couldn't enjoy the occasional pizza. Rhea gave birth to a healthy baby boy god. He was the most beautiful and perfect one yet. Rhea named him Zeus, which, depending on who you ask, either means sky, or shining, or simply living. I personally vote for the last one, because I think at this point, Rhea had simple hopes for this kid. Keep him alive and away from hostile stomachs. Zeus began to cry, maybe because he sensed his mother's anxiety. The sound echoed through the cave and out into the world, so loud that everyone and their titan mother knew who the baby was and that the baby had been born. Oh, great, Rhea muttered. I promise to bring the child to Kronos immediately. Now word will get back to Kronos that it's baby swallowing time. The cave floor rumbled. A large stone emerged from the dirt, a smooth oval rock, exactly the same size and weight as a baby god. <laughs>